I've had a long-standing agreement with fighting games that has so far proven to be beneficial for the both of us, that agreement being that they stuck to fighting mechanics and left intricate plots to games that have a structure better suited for telling a story, and I'll leave them alone and mind my own business. Alas, times change, and over the last decade more and more fighting games have started adding plot to their games that try and explain why diverse groups of people from around the world keep getting into kung fu fights over something other than racism. Explanations that used to be regulated to a paragraph of text you read in the game manual, which games don't come with anymore, and then a bit of text congratulating you after finishing the tournament mode. If we ignore Shinmu for being a part-time job simulator that occasionally lets you fight people, then I think Mortal Kombat is a true original sin in this case. I guess when your fighting game is known for having the most dated mechanics among your peers, you have to attract attention with something else. Used to be that meant including hyper-violent fatalities to upset your mom, your pastor, the newsroom anchor, and then Hillary Clinton. In that exact order. But these days, kids are exposed to characters having their heads ripped off and eaten before they've touched their first real-life breast, so fatalities no longer cut it. Now we get proper explanations for that head buffet. This is the rare occasion, viewers, where you get to watch me complain about a game for even having a plot that I can sin. My head is exploding with irony just as much as yours. So much so you might count it as a fatality, but one of the crappier ones, like Shang Tsung turning into the Joker and shooting his opponent. Don't think I didn't catch that reuse animation for Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe NetherRealm? NetherRealm stopped counting the entries into the series after the fourth game, preferring generic subtitles instead. But this game is simply titled Mortal Kombat, but it's actually the ninth game in the series, and I had to spend a good amount of time researching that fact. And even now, I'm not sure which game is supposed to be the eighth game in the series. I assume it's Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, though for some reason Raiden won't be recalling any future memories of that one time he fought Batman. Mortal Kombat kicks off right after Mortal Kombat Armageddon's Battle Royale and with only Raiden and Shao Kahn left alive, which is already a major retcon in itself since some forgettable newcomer was the canon victor of that game, and he's nowhere to be seen. With Raiden then beaten and Shao Kahn getting the winner winner chicken dinner, Raiden concocts a Hail Mary plan using a magic amulet that lets him send messages through time to himself in the past, something that would have been extremely useful in virtually every other game he's been in for avoiding horrible outcomes, and he only thought to use it after everything has gone to hell. He must win. Even when sending a warning to his past self, Raiden plays the pronoun game instead of saying Shao Kahn's name. He sends his past self a whole bunch of memories of events from several Mortal Kombat games that will be wiped from existence and won't matter at all when it comes to stopping Shao Kahn, but couldn't say Shao Kahn's name to avoid confusion. Lord Raiden, what is wrong? Strange visions. If future Raiden knows his amulet can send memories back in time, then I have to assume Raiden in the past also understands how this thing works, except that he doesn't seem to know what is going on when he receives the visions of the future. Combatants, I am Shang Tsung. Even if you are hard of hearing, I don't recommend turning on subtitles, lest you want your eyes rolling back in their sockets so much every time they replace the letter C with a K you go permanently blind. The only other place that gets this much mileage out the letter K is Russia, and no one here is wearing Adidas, so that possibility is tossed out the window and I have to assume they're all illiterate. Mortal Kombat originally had a cast of seven playable characters, with two of them just being the same guy with a palette swap, which is a pitiful roster for a fighting game. It seems NetherRealm agreed, because they retconned the hell out of it, and had characters from Mortal Kombat's 2 through 4 while borrowing the plot of the Mortal Kombat movie, which I should point out, managed to tell the story of the first game whilst only adding one character from the sequel, Katana. You participate in the most important Mortal Kombat in history. This tournament, the 10th after 9 Outworld victories, will determine Earthrealm's fate. The Mortal Kombat tournament is a martial arts tournament that a parallel universe called Outworld uses to take over the Earth. In order to do so, they have to win 10 of them in a row, and this is their last chance to prevent it. I think I see why Earthrealm lost all the previous tournaments. The rules are so vaguely defined that they are made up on the spot by Shang Tsung. There's no tournament bracket to speak of. People just challenge and fight whoever they want and whenever. Sometimes Shang Tsung will even pit two Outworld fighters against a single Earthrealm fighter, and no one complains about the unfair advantage. For this final Mortal Kombat, Raiden picked a Hollywood actor, a racist stereotype, a walking pair of breast implants, and Liu Kang, who seems to be the only reasonable choice he made. Which means Earthrealm gets four fighters to the eleven or so Outworld gets. That's it. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh yeah! I'm so pretty. And I'm taking you down, I'm taking you down, I'm taking you out, I'm taking you out, and I'm taking you out for dinner. Johnny Cage is about as likable as a giant squid wearing an SS uniform. I understand that's the whole point of his character, but there is such a thing as taking your parody too far and becoming the thing you were meant to lampoon. You can tuck your tongue so far into your cheek that you end up tickling your own ass. And judging from this, they liked the way it felt. Your last opponent was Tarkatan. He was born with those blades. Yeah, those things are real. 
I don't know why Johnny is so unwilling to believe in the supernatural when he is shooting balls of green energy out of his hands. His entire reason for fighting in this tournament is to prove his powers are not Hollywood special effects even. They have Jax. And if I don't fight in this crazy tournament, they'll kill him. Shang Tsung kidnaps Sonya Blade's partner Jax to force her to fight in the tournament. I don't know why you would want to force an elite fighter to go against you in your own tournament. If I were putting money down on a fight, I wouldn't then move heaven and earth to make sure my guy's opponent was Bruce Lee, now would I? Pinning that badge on her chest must be the most dangerous task Sonya accomplishes every day. But then again, Sonya is military special forces. Why is she even wearing a police badge? Here's the main problem with trying to tell a story in a fighting game. Every little misunderstanding must always lead to a fight. Johnny tries to hit on Sonya, but she gives him the cold shoulder. So he then beats the ever-loving crap out of her, then continues to hit on her afterward like he didn't just punch her in the baby maker so hard her ovaries are now located somewhere around her collarbone. This is the equivalent of pile driving a woman for leaving you on red. I would assume Kano trying to kill Johnny and Sonya outside of an official match would count as a foul, but I don't think it does. Do you want to kill Kano or maybe restrain him since he's lying on the floor behind Johnny right now? You will face Sub-Zero of the Lin Kuei clan of assassins. Isn't Sub-Zero a fighter for Earthrealm though? Later you make Sub-Zero and Scorpion fight each other. And Scorpion is also fighting for our world under Quan Chi. You will not be the one who challenged Shang Tsung. You want some too? Fine by me. Sonya can't help but pick a fight with everyone. And no one can ever bother to take a second to explain themselves to her. You aided their escape. You allowed them to escape. Did she even need to escape? Are you telling me that Shang Tsung, the guy running this, can just attack and kill anyone he wants right in front of Raiden? Look, I'm no prude. I'm jerking it right now. But if I have to dress up incognito to avoid being recognized while buying the game in a store? You've gone too far into shameless titillation. It looks like porn, sounds like porn. But the only one getting screwed is you when the game bends you over for the final fight. For a special forces agent, Sonya didn't bring a single gun with her. And I can't see any reason why she wouldn't, since weapons are not forbidden from being used in Mortal Kombat. Kano is not your prisoner. But she does have the right to kill him in Mortal Kombat. You even told Johnny off for not killing Baraka after defeating him. What was the point of chasing after Sonya and trying to stop her from freeing Jax if you were going to walk away and let her go after freeing him? Lightning can heal grievous bodily injuries. I have foreseen events, like memories of my future. They lead me to believe that you are all connected to Earthrealm's fate. What have you foreseen? In my visions, Shao Kahn becomes invincible. He destroys all life in Earthrealm. We will all die. There shouldn't be anyone who knows Raiden better than Raiden himself. He even has visions of the future to guide him. And a good chunk of the possibilities are narrowed down by the use of a gender pronoun. Yet Raiden will spend the entire game struggling to comprehend the meaning of he must win. He even knows who killed him in the future as he said it. I know it is you, Kung Lao. The Shaolin monks chose Liu Kang to represent your order in this tournament. Kung Lao was not in the first Mortal Kombat, so Raiden should have no memory of this from the future. What Raiden is seeing is a retcon. Nightwolf was also not in Mortal Kombat 1 or even 2. He didn't show up until Mortal Kombat 3. If they can have a stereotype like Nightwolf in Mortal Kombat, they should have just included Aunt Jemima as a combatant. Spare Sub-Zero's life, and I will request that the Elder Gods return the Shirai Ryu to the realm of mortals. Sub-Zero and Scorpion are both fighting for Outworld, so no matter which one wins, it's a victory for Earth. Save the bargaining for a fight where the outcome matters. Let's talk about how high school this Mortal Kombat tournament is. These incredibly deadly fighters are all grouped together by click, and then they bully Scorpion when he tries to fit in. Sektor and Cyrax are two more characters who didn't appear until Mortal Kombat 3. And honestly, most of the new characters from Mortal Kombat 3 kind of sucked. Mortal Kombat was always the more ghetto fighting game out there. Using scanned photos of real people in the 16-bit days instead of sprite art, you would think that would lead to a large variety of characters, since it was a lot easier to scan photos of your gym buddies in poor-fitting Halloween costumes and painstakingly draw frames of 2D sprites. But even after the series' success, it stuck with its traditions. That's why nearly half the roster is made up of some color variation of masked male and female ninjas and cyborgs. But his plan goes against Lin Kuei principles. We are Lin Kuei, Cyrax. We will obey the Grand Master's commands. Lin Kuei are a clan of Chinese assassins. I'm trying to figure out how Cyrax fits into their organization without being their affirmative action hire. A challenge! Scorpion versus Cyrax and Sector! But Cyrax is fighting on your side, and all Cyrax did was push Scorpion. The Mortal Kombat universe must operate under the same challenge rules as Pokemon. Someone makes eye contact in the field and it's on. Sonya already defeated Sub-Zero in an official match. He should be disqualified, since there doesn't appear to be a loser's bracket. To hell with your clan. No. That's allowed. Scorpion can just drag Sub-Zero to the underworld where he would have home field advantage and no one could see if he cheated or not. This is your retribution. Scorpion, kill him. I 
I will not. He has been beaten. Have you forgotten? Can we get Quan Chi as a guest character in The Last of Us 2? I think he could help out with the ending. Quan Chi shows Scorpion hand-drawn artwork of when his family and clan were murdered, supposedly by Sub-Zero. But the images depict feudal Japan, with people living in castles and huts and wearing old-fashioned clothes and hairstyles. And the attackers used bows and rode on horses. Yet this atrocity was carried out in modern times. Your clan. Your family. Since Scorpion is fighting for our world in this tournament to get revenge on Sub-Zero, I assume Quan Chi had already told him all of this. But Scorpion reacts like this is his first time seeing it. And this isn't exactly proof of Quan Chi's words. This is nothing but hand-drawn artwork. Baraka overhears Raiden telling Cyrex that working for Shang Tsung is stupid. And even though Cyrex didn't respond or change his mind, Baraka and Shiva still show up to kill him. Shiva would need to use two of those four hands to avoid popping out of that bikini. The next match will be Cyrex versus Johnny Cage. Cyrex had already been defeated by Scorpion in the tournament, yet he gets to fight again and eliminate Johnny Cage. You have broken your oath. I use my judgment. The Cyber Initiative will eliminate insubordination. We are not machines, Sector. I chose to serve the Lin Kuei, but I will not surrender my free will. Cyrex is against the Lin Kuei's cyberization program, even defeating Sector and leaving the tournament, yet all of his actions are meaningless, because later Cyrex becomes a cyborg anyway and does exactly as he is told. Behold! Ermac! Ermac also was in Immortal Kombat. I know the roster for the first game was small, but it wasn't so small it needed to be retconned this heavily. Raiden's memories of the past and the new reality don't even line up anymore. Liu Kang, you are the sole Earthrealm warrior to progress to this final stage of the tournament. Who defeated Sonya in the tournament? She won every fight Shang Tsung put her in. I tried to place every seemingly official match into a tournament bracket, but it makes no sense. He is a greater threat than anticipated. I will ensure he does not reach the final challenge. Is that an officially sanctioned match or a straight up assassination? Why does Outworld get so much leeway when it comes to running this tournament? Shouldn't Raiden be trying to uphold some sort of rules? They must have allocated most of the modeling budget to the ladies, because Liu Kang's chest looks like it was drawn by Rob Liefeld. Then again, so did the women. He must win. He must win. Those are my last words before I die. I believe it is you who must win. Raiden has to figure out who his future self meant by he, which leads him to believe he must mean Liu Kang, even though Raiden received visions of future events, like Liu Kang winning the tournament and then winning the second tournament, so Raiden should already know that Liu Kang isn't the answer. You're good. Show me more. Horniness gets in the way of Katana's assassination of Liu Kang. I have failed my father, my emperor. Shao Kahn is your father? And he lets you go outside dressed like that? Your opponent will be... Scorpion! Fighting with Scorpion, the sorcerer Quan Chi! That seems fair. Two on one. This is also a great time to mention that the game's tag mechanic is something you never get to play with in the story mode. Only opponents get to use it. I did not expect to fight in this tournament. But eventually, even the Shaolin produce a warrior worthy of the Shokan. Cyrex beat the crap out of Shiva in a two-on-one, and she's a Shokan warrior too. Shang Tsung, only one fight remains. Face me in Mortal Kombat. They've definitely dropped the title before now, but I'm sleepwalking my way through this plot, so I guess you could roll credits here. Sort of appropriate, since it was the final fight of the first game. But I am bound by their rules. Rules that cannot be broken. My lord! Kill him. But what if the rules were changed? You can just do that? I know those are my words, but they might as well have been coming out of Shao Kahn's mouth as well. Shang Tsung? You have been revitalized, I see. I didn't realize your master was in the habit of rewarding failure. Shao Kahn unboomered Shang Tsung so he could better carry out this new plan. I think de-aging the guy who served as the final opponent in the tournament is something you should have considered doing beforehand to improve the odds in your favor. Emperor proposes a single tournament to replace the current system of ten. It will be held in Outworld. Raiden should also be able to set a few terms of his own, like fairer rules. Raiden tells Shang Tsung to piss off on holding another tournament, which would actually stop the bad timeline and his visions from coming true if he stuck with that decision. But then Shang Tsung opens a portal and Outworlders attack the temple, which should breach the terms of Outworld not being allowed to attack Earthrealm and take Sonya Blade hostage. Raiden decides, with no evidence, that more of these attacks will occur if he doesn't accept the new tournament. He puts the entire world at risk over one girl and the possibility of more small-scale attacks. And why aren't the Kung Fu twins here helping? us. 
I sent Liu Kang and Kung Lao to free their Shaolin masters. Their Shaolin masters that we conveniently never heard about or see them freeing. The tournament will begin! Jackson Briggs, you will face Baraka! Jax's fight against Baraka is the only official tournament match for most of Chapter 2. Raiden takes his best fighters all over Outworld, doing everything other than focusing on winning the tournament he dragged them into. Where's Sonya? Tell me, Major Briggs. Do you and she do anything other than rescue one another? They wrote this and clearly realized it was crap, but instead of coming up with a better scenario, they added a bit of snark to lampshade it. Well, sorry, Netherrealm. You can paper over a blemish. But this is more like drawing a penis on it and hoping people laugh instead. I don't even know why you're feeling so self-conscious about your plot. No one is really expecting anything from you. And once you stuck every female in a bikini and did make your setting a beach volleyball tournament, we have the right to laugh at you. I'm her CO. Honey like that under my command? Oh, I'd You'll want to stop talking now. But if it's not like that, then you won't mind if I- That's it! Time somebody shut you the hell up! With all the extra Mortal Kombat characters added into this, you would think they could come up with a better basis for fights other than Jack's White Knights for Sonya. Jade shows up and tells him to leave the armory, and only Jack's fights are while Raiden and Johnny watch from the sidelines. This isn't a tournament match, and it has already been established that two on one is fine. What is it with your Shokan and underground cesspools? If you had not dishonored yourself by attempting escape, we would not be here in the sewer. What you just heard was them struggling to come up with a reason for why Sonya was being held in an acid-filled sewer, because that was one of the more memorable fighting stages in the second game. And fighting stages used to be built to be cool, not because they had any narrative weight. That's weird. I've got two sets of readings, heavy tech signals, both of them. Sonya has a scanner that is apparently designed to locate and track technology, which seems an odd thing to build back on Earth, where there would be plenty of technology that would set the thing off and make it completely useless for tracking anyone. They cannot be of Outworld. We need to confront the source of each signal. Do you? Don't you have a tournament to win? Why do you care about some random people from Earthrealm showing up? We should stay together, Tundra. Assuming your brother's identity will certainly draw attention. Not all of it welcome. You are right, Smoke. But assuming Bihan's identity is the best way to honor him. Come off it. It's branding. Sub-Zero and Scorpion are the Ryu and Ken of this franchise. We should separate. Smoke just put forward the excellent idea of staying together. Then they inexplicably separate to look for Shang Tsung, all to find out what happened to the original Sub-Zero, Bihan. Wise though your emperor might be, he was foolish to send his housemaid to interfere with Lin Kuei business. You know, Katana was there at the tournament. You could probably ask her what happened to Bihan. Smoke comes across Shang Tsung testing rocket launchers delivered by Kano. This is a weird point to turn on since I was under the impression that Outworld sorcery trumped Earthrealm's technology. But now they need a few crates of old Soviet Union hardware to turn the time. Smoke then proceeds to beat the crap out of Kano, Shang Tsung, and Reptile, which tells me that Raiden would have been better off recruiting him than all the other people he got for the first tournament. Shang Tsung was the final fight of that after all. Sector comes back as a cyborg and uses all the same moves he used as a human, so I don't know what turning himself into a cyborg accomplished. I guess the Lin Kuei didn't consider that turning themselves into cyborgs would give them one hell of a weakness. Cyber Cyrax tries to capture Sub-Zero to turn him into a cyborg as well, gets defeated, and then teleports away because nothing actually matters. I am only here to learn Sub-Zero's fate. He was killed by someone named Scorpion. If only you had thought to ask the people who were there before coming all the way to Outworld. Ermac simply telekinetically rips Jax's arms off, then proceeds to fight Sub-Zero and doesn't do that to him. Probably explains why he loses. Sonya Blade to command. Sonya Blade to command, do you read? Sonya Blade to command, do you read? You are in another dimension. You really expect a response from HQ? But I need your help to There's get- There's a portal to the south. You can use it to transport yourselves back to Earthrealm. Mother f You can rip a man's arms off in this game, but you can't swear. Sub-Zero just showed up for the tournament and was allowed to fight. But then again, they might have confused him with one of the other dozen or so ninja characters who look just like him. Sub-Zero? No! You cannot save him. But you can. You zapped a bunch of cyborgs earlier to save Smoke. And if the Lin Kuei cyborgs can interfere in the tournament, you can interfere to save Sub-Zero. We request that we may return him to our temple for judgment. And what do I gain from granting this bold request? The Lin Kuei's loyalty and service. Is Sub-Zero really that important that pledging yourself to Shao Kahn in exchange for him is a worthwhile trade? How is it that Earthrealm ninjas brazenly appear before me when my daughter, Princess of Outworld, was sent to intercept them? 
Maybe you should have sent more than your half-naked daughter to confront them. You do control the entire planet. Send an army or something. Are those Japanese castles supposed to be burning in the background? What's the story behind that? And what are Japanese-style castles even doing here in the first place? These are the questions I don't have to bother asking when there isn't much of a plot in a fighting game. But this game needs environments for characters to have story moments in, not just cool stages for a fight. So now we have Katana, deciding to take a stroll on the murder beach with all the impelled corpses after her daddy got mad at her. You dare approach me. Hey listen honey, we don't want to fight, but we will if we must. Raiden might want to stop smoking Johnny Cage before they beat the crap out of the woman he's trying to recruit. Something whispers to you that circumstances should be different. That you should be different. What exactly does Raiden hope to accomplish by turning Katana? She can't fight in the Tournament for Earth, and he doesn't ask her to do anything that would help them. Why do you- You need answers, Katana. I can help you find them if you will trust in me. Go to Shang Tsung's flesh pits. Much will be revealed there. Raiden clearly knows the truth that Katana is not Shao Kahn's real daughter, and even somehow knows Shang Tsung is making a clone of her, but doesn't tell her and just mentions she should visit the flesh pits. Jesus Christ game. How horny were the developers? I mean, despite her looks, Melina is a newborn tank baby, but I keep expecting her to mention her OnlyFans page. You're supposed to let the cosplayers make your characters look as slutty as possible, not do it yourself. So pretty, so fair, so sad and alone. Despite just waking up, Melina knows how to fight, who she is and who Katana is, and she acts all seductive, despite being a complete virgin when you think about it. You will stand before my father and confess your deeds. Before dragging Shang Tsung off to Shao Kahn, maybe you should finish off Melina like you were about to before he interrupted. You approve? How could you? My own father! I am your emperor! Your father was a weakling at Dingy and King. I annihilated him while merging his realm with Outworld, and took his queen as my wife. If only I had not allowed Sindel to convince me of your worth. But now, I have a true daughter! Would it really be that hard for someone like Shao Kahn to sire a true heir? When you conquer entire worlds, and you wear the title of Khan, I kind of expect you to engage in similar activities as your namesake. Jade, Melina, and Katana were color swat female ninjas like Sub-Zero and Scorpion in the old games, and they haven't changed much since then. You could run a laser scanner over these girls and get the exact same measurements. After getting his ass kicked so much, Baraka is looking to switch from fighting games to Call of Duty. You must keep your eyes open. Oh, they're open alright. Go. Find Raiden. Ask for his help. Well that rescue was pointless. What is Raiden supposed to do? He has his own worries. I guess that counts as more clothes than the bandages Melina was wearing earlier, but not by much. Kitana turns away from Shao Kahn, so you attack her rather than join her? This is not- Smoke, Ch stop! That is not Katana! You will come no closer! God, the good guys are stupid in this game. None of them even bother stopping Smoke from fighting Jade. Melina was knocked out on the ground a second ago. She isn't there anymore and no one mentions her leaving. That makes twice now she could have been finished off. I am not pleased with this outcome either, Liu Kang. But there is no time. We must return to the tournament. But Raiden has kept his best fighters from fighting in the tournament to decide the fate of Earth while jobbers die one after another in their stead. Perhaps you are meant to be the victor. Raiden is just winging it at this point. No Earth realm war can stop this deadly alliance. Well that's a title drop for a game that has now been retconned out of existence. Shouldn't Kung Lao also have to fight Ermac? He just defeated Johnny Cage right before this, so Ermac should be fought before Kentaro. You see Raiden? Earthrealm is free- doesn't that count as cheating? Shao Kahn never declared a match, and never stated in the new agreement that he would face the winner of the tournament like Shang Tsung did. Why is it so hard to set up some rules for a martial arts tournament that decides the fate of worlds and is approved of by the Elder Gods? Do you know who I am? The murderer of my friend. I am Shao Kahn, conqueror of worlds! For a conqueror of worlds, Shao Kahn is just a move-spamming bitch. He must have defeated all of his enemies by making them rage quit after he's thrown his dozen spear, hammer, and shoulder ram. Shao Kahn survives this, making even fatalities pointless. He must win refers to you. But to prevent Armageddon, you needed to defeat Shao Kahn, not Chang Tsung. It cannot be. Shao Kahn is dead. Yet the future remains unchanged. Normally, people end up wanting to kick their past selves' ass for being stupid. In Raiden's case, it's his future self. Because of you, Outworlds can no longer merge with Earthrealm! There may yet be an alternative, Emperor. Invasion. I am bound by the rules. But what if you weren't? 
Oh shit, I never thought of that. She realized that the safeguards afforded by the Elder Gods through mortal combat are but fiction. She sacrificed herself to give protection the Elder Gods could not. So Earthrealm could not suffer as had Edania. Katana's mother is the one responsible for these tournaments in the first place after placing wards to protect Earthrealm and by resurrecting her and making her evil. Outworld can straight up invade Earthrealm because the Mortal Kombat tournaments were bullshit. Outworld is invading Earth, and only two cops are effective at fighting them. Reptile can block bullets with a poison mist, which means no one should ever be able to touch him if he wanted, but he's had his ass handed to him repeatedly in this game. Reptile grabs Stryker's gun with his tongue, but then Stryker has his gun during the fight. It's a wasted opportunity to mix up the gameplay if you ask me. Story mode should be full of little modifications to the fights that reflect what's going on in the plot, so handicapping a character by taking away a pretty overpowered move would have been appreciated. Stryker doesn't kill or cuff Reptile. This is an acid-spitting lizard man from another dimension. You don't need to have a sense of fair play or read him as rights. Stryker, check her out. What do you think? Friend or foe? Foe. Dressed like that? Definitely foe. Katana and Jay dress in exactly the same manner as Melina, yet they're on Earth's side. This is the third time Melina has been beaten, and even Raiden doesn't bother killing or capturing her despite being at war with Outworld. Stryker survives this and gets up to have a go with Ermac, who by all rights should be capable of wiping the floor with him, since the guy is a telekinetic ninja, and Stryker is a pretty normal person in regards to the rest of the cast. I am Nightwolf. Lord Raiden is gathering Earth's defenders. You are among them. Nightwolf has apparently been searching for Stryker, but not his partner Cabal for some reason, even though he ends up being a part of Raiden's group of warriors as well. Kano just happened to find Cabal on the street during the middle of the invasion. Or was he really out there looking for a former Black Dragon member who became a police officer? Shang Tsung's magic healed the rest of you, but your lungs... Yeah. Take it off. Can't. It's permanent. What? No mask, no breathing. Cabal's respirator is plugged directly into his neck, so removing the mask would not stop him from breathing. I don't use those anymore. Kano offers Cabal his old swords, who rejects them. Then Kano tosses them on the floor, but then Cabal is using them in his fight with Kano. And after beating Kano, he picks up the swords Kano threw on the ground and are still there, but he was somehow using in the fight. Raiden has killed Motaro. I'm guessing Motaro's four-legged anatomy was too time-consuming to program and animate. That would have required Netherrealm to make a third animation rig, unlike the two shared between all the males and females. So he was killed off-screen by Raiden without getting so much as a single line of dialogue. Shao Kahn absorbs Shang Tsung and uses him to power up Sindel. Meanwhile, Cabal makes a move, and only two people out of a room full of fighters make a move to stop him and protect Shao Kahn while he's performing a ritual. And then during the fight, Shao Kahn is on his throne watching. Then he yells for Quan Chi to close the portal when he could have done that at any point he was sitting on the throne watching Cabal beat up his daughter. This speed's incredible. Because it's a side effect of the outworld magic. The side effect of having your burned skin magically healed is super speed. After Cabal beats Cyber Sub-Zero, they finally wise up and bring a defeated enemy back with them. Somehow they reprogram him back to being a good guy, even though none of them are programmers or would have any understanding of the Lin Kuei's cyberization systems. We need intel, right? Let's send him back to Outworld undercover. They will be unaware of my defection. That's actually not a bad idea. That is then upended as soon as Sub-Zero arrives by Sector who detects that Sub-Zero is free from his mind control module. After hacking Sector for information on what Shao Kahn's forces are up to, Sub-Zero doesn't shut down or destroy Sector to remove a very dangerous threat. Because despite being a machine now, he is still an idiot. Kano has a group of soldiers tied up inside of a clock tower with the intent of transporting them to a cemetery so Quan Chi can use them for a sacrifice. Except after freeing the soldiers, Sub-Zero reaches the cemetery and finds Quan Chi performing the sacrifice with a different group of soldiers, so he didn't even need Kano's prisoners. Sub-Zero, we will disrupt the Solnado. I will be there momentarily. Only Nightwolf backs up Sub-Zero in stopping Quan Chi from creating the Soul Nado, something that will absorb all the souls of Earth. I mean, Raiden could instantly teleport all of them there to stop it. It's not like the rest of the team is doing anything. The one King of Warner. He is mine. That's right, Cyber Sub-Zero froze Kano while saving the soldiers, but didn't kill him or capture him. So now Kano was able to warn Noob about Sub-Zero switching sides. You are not worthy of the name Sub-Zero. Who are you to judge? I wore those colors before you. Bihan? Yes, Kuai Liang. It is I. Quan Chi restored me. Restored? You and I both. We are flawed copies of our former selves. I have no flaws. Quan Chi has perfected me. For what end? To serve the Netherrealm and Outworld? 
It suits my purpose. Mortal Kombat's history of creating palette swap characters with paper thin backstories has come back to be a real pain in the ass in this reboot. That's why Noob Saibot now has a backstory that conflicts with a backstory established for Sub Zero, who was betrayed by Quan Chi in mythologies, which I'm pretty sure is still canon, but now is perfectly fine with being a slave. Go! Your soul is not safe! But he's a robot. Shouldn't Sub Zero be the safest person for dealing with a soul NATO? Nighthawk stops the soul NATO by kicking Noob into it, but Noob is just another soul going into a thing meant to suck up souls. Why would that destroy it? Katana wears even less clothing after switching over to the good guy's side. Normally, it's evil that gets to wear the more revealing outfits. Nightwolf, you will lead until we return. Raiden puts Nightwolf in charge while he's away, and this is the only order he gives during an ambush. Attack! In fact, he gives it twice. Attack! Would it have been that hard to alter the backgrounds during story mode? This place is Raiden's HQ. They even had a meeting at that table. But as soon as the fighting starts, there's a priest holding a blood sacrifice on it. It's at this point the game recalls that it hasn't really lived up to the legacy of Mortal Kombat since only Kung Lao has died. So it kills off nearly every character except Sonya and Johnny Cage in a turn so sudden. I'm pretty sure the direction in the script was, and then everyone died. Elder Gods, I beseech you. Earth Realm is in danger. We are aware of your plight, Raiden. Then you must intervene on Earthrealm's behalf. We cannot. Not our problem, says the Boomer Gods. The last doors are closing. We are nearly trapped. Raiden knows that Earth wins this war since there are memories that were clearly from after Shao Kahn's invasion. For all he knows, he must win as referring to something after this. Name your terms. What do you offer? I offer... I offer the souls of Earthrealm warriors who die in this conflict. Raiden offers the souls of Earthrealm warriors in exchange for Quan Chi's help, but Quan Chi reveals Shao Kahn already gave him that and summons all the killed fighters as revenants. Though I noticed that when Quan Chi revived Sindel earlier, she looked normal. Unlike here where she has gray skin and cracks with glowing eyes like everyone else, and Sub-Zero was revived as Cyborg Sub-Zero instead of flesh and blood. Katana's outfit changes in between camera angles of something so revealing, this was almost a Metro Last Light boob test joke. Only through Mortal Kombat may Shao Kahn merge the realms, lest he face the judgment of the Elder Gods. Lest he face the judgment of the Elder Gods. He must win. Raiden finally realizes what he must win refers to. Except that had he realized it sooner, it would have had the opposite effect of stopping Shao Kahn. If Raiden allowed Shao Kahn to win either of the first two Mortal Kombat tournaments, then Shao Kahn would have won properly and could merge the realms without crossing the Elder Gods. Future Raiden was referring specifically to this moment when he crossed over without winning a tournament. The visions of the future only needed to be sent to Raiden at the start of Mortal Kombat 3, not the first game. Enough of your madness! If you must die, so be it! Liu Kang doesn't believe Raiden's crap as of like five minutes ago when he decided Raiden was losing it. So they fight, and Raiden accidentally kills him in a pretty contrived way. The Elder Gods finally do something after Shao Kahn crosses over, but instead of striking him down, they just make Raiden glow yellow. Does this make him stronger? No. He's the same as ever and has to fight Shao Kahn with his normal powers, but he can now shoot a yellow beam of energy at Shao Kahn that kills him. I don't think it was the lack of lasers that made Shao Kahn such a difficult problem. Anything could technically kill him. Liu Kang punched a hole in his stomach and he only survived due to Quan Chi's magic after all. Raiden's amulet fell off and shattered while fighting Shao Kahn, but after the fight it's fully intact and he's wearing it again. Your plan worked to perfection, Lord Shinnok. Sequel baiting. And since the bait sets up the same events that happened in Mortal Kombat 4, you have to wonder what rebooting the series and stopping the events of the bad timeline from unfolding actually accomplished if they're just going to repeat those events in the next game anyway. Fatality.